to my fellow future educators and to you, Ma'am Sheila May Nodalo, our science, technology, and society instructor, a blessed full morning to all of us. I am Elmarie Alvarado Hidaro, and today I am going to tackle about the lesson 4, which is all about the nano world. But let me read first the learning outcomes. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to first define nanoscience clearly, second, discuss the contributions of persons to the subject, and lastly, appreciate the uses of nanoscience and nanotechnology. And now let's have the introduction. Nano world of science and technology is of great interest to governments, industries, and academia. Yes, of course, because the nanotechnology is very essential to governments and industries. And why academia has a great interest of the nanotechnology? It is because all about nano world are under research and still it's ongoing process. Conduct of different, different ways or method to come up a really sophisticated nanotechnology tool or devices. The prefix nano denotes sizes of the order of one billionth of a meter. Imagine how small is one meter, then the one billionth of a meter. It's kind of very small. Example for this is a human hair. A human hair is between 50,000 and 100,000 nanometers thick. Second, a single sheet of paper is around 75,000 nanometers thick. So that's how small nano is. Alright, so when we say nanometer, it is billion of a meter. These are uh, examples of nano. Simple molecules, the any proteins, red blood cell, diatom, SOI transistor, DNA, and so much more. Okay, nanostructure science and technology is a broad and interdisciplinary area of research and development activity that has been growing explosively worldwide in the past few years. Yes, nanotechnology, as what I have mentioned in the first part of my discussion, it is an area of research and development and still on its continuous progress. It has the potential for revolutionizing the way in which materials and products are created and the range and nature of functionalities that can be accessed. That was according to CHL 1999. Alright, this nanotechnology has its potential for revolutionizing why nanotech is different. The materials and products are created on a scale base. The smaller the device, the more functionalities can be accessed. History of nanotechnology. It is when uh, nanotechnology started. The emergence of nanotechnology in the 1980s was caused by the convergence of experimental advances such as the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope in 1981 and the discovery of Fulerness in 1985. However, the ideas and concepts behind nanoscience and nanotechnology started with a talk entitled There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom by physicist Richard Finman at an American Physical Society meeting at the California Institute of Technology or Caltech on December 29, 1959, long before the term nanotechnology was used. All right. Before nanotechnology was used in 1980s, the ideas and concepts started on December 29, 1959 with talk of physicist Richard Finman entitled There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. Finman's talk held as the origin of nanotechnology which vision is to control matter at the nanoscale. So some uh, say na 1980s na ito na, na, na invento the, the history trace back on 1980s but the ideas and concept was discovered on this uh, 1959 all right so let's move on to definition of terms first term is the nanomaterials denote the divided matter so when we say divided matter uh, these are matters split into smaller pieces with at least one external dimension that measures 100 nanometer or less or with internal structures measuring 100 nan nanometer or less. 
So, ito yung measurement ng nanomaterials. 100 nanometer or less or um, internal structures measuring 100 nanometer or less. As around 1999 said, if you take a piece of solid matter containing an Avogadro number of atoms and go dividing it to smaller bits, you will ultimately end up with an atom of the substance. So, yun yung nanomaterials. Break, you will break down the matters into smaller pieces and uh, you will come up with the atom of a substance. Alright, so for better understanding, these are the examples of nanomaterials, its application, and the nanomaterial use. So first, we have environmental and water remediation. And the nanomaterial use there is iron, polyurethane, carbon nanotubes, and graphene. Number two is uh, application is for food packaging. Uh, the material used is gold, nanoclase, titanium dioxide, and silver. Next, we have nanoparticles. Such particles with diameters of 1 to 50 nanometers or 10 to 500 are referred to as nanoparticles. So, these nanoparticles are smaller than the nanomaterials. It means you divided nanomaterials into smaller pieces and that's we call the nanoparticles. Examples are titanium dioxide, carbon nanotubes, silica, copper, clay, and aluminum oxide. Next, we have number three, the nanoscience. Refers to the scientific study of materials of nanometer size or one billion of a meter. That was according to the Royal Society, 1994. Okay, let me clear. Nanoscience is the study or the theory of nanomaterials of nanometer size. It's a, uh, also, nanoscience is a convergence of physics, material science, and biology which deal with manipulation of materials at atomic and molecular scales. Okay, that's why they call it nano because in this technology, they are using atoms and molecules. Now, you can imagine how small it is. Why they are using atoms? Let me remind you that all matter, whether it is living or not, is composed of chemical elements that cannot be changed. Also, without atoms, this would not be a functioning world. Because atoms make up matter, and matter makes up everything in the world. So, lahat ng matter na makikita natin dito sa mundo ay my matter. Examples of matter, oxygen atoms. So, these oxygen atoms are the air that keep us alive. Imagine, so, kung walang atom na nasa air, so how can we breathe? How can we survive? Next is carbon dioxide. Carbon or the, or the carbon dioxide atoms. These are released from our bodies and plants so, the, so that they can photosynthesize. Okay, this carbon dioxide is very essential to the plants to make this uh, their own food. Next is hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. Bond together to form hydrogen, which is water. Alright, so also water is made up of an atom. So how can a human survive without water? Alright, so those are examples of significant atoms that keeps us alive. Remember, all matter has an atom. Next, we have number four, the nanotechnology. It refers to various technologies to produce materials of extra high precision and dimensions on the scale of one billionth of a meter. So, nanotechnology is all about producing materials of extra precision and dimensions, meaning um, materials that are produced of pr that are produced are are accurate. The measurement is exact. Walang labis, walang kulang. Norio Taniguchi of Tokyo Science University is credited with coining the term nanotechnology in 1974. So, yun na nga yung sabi ko kanina na though the ideas and concepts of nanotechnology ay nagkaroon na ng idea noong 1959 but they come up with, that, with this term nanotechnology noong 1974. Alright, so nanotechnology is a field of research and innovation concerned with building things Generally, materials and devices on the scale of atoms and molecules. Okay, um, nanotechnology, ito yung pag-build ng mga bagay, mga devices, mga technologies na, na advance na ito ay naka, 
naka-measure noon ang measurement dito ay nakabase sa scale of an atoms and molecules. So in this nanotechnology, we are using atoms and molecules. Alright, these are some of the examples of nanotechnology. First, we have food security. Uh, we have nanosensors in packaging can detect salmonella and other contaminants in food. So, in, nanotechnology is very helpful for our food security kasi may mga bagay o mga devices na ginagamit para ma-detect uh, yung mga contaminants in food. Second, we have medicine. Alright, we have number two, medicine. Allowing medicine to become more personalized, safer, and easier to deliver. Tiny particles that can directly target cancer cells in the body. So, uh, nanotechnology is very help helpful when it comes to uh, the medicine and health aspects because it is now safer and easier to deliver um, some medicine and treatments to our body that can directly target cancer cells in the body. So, hindi na maaapektuhan yung mga hindi cancer cells sa ating katawan. Next, we have clear paint that reduces heat and damage caused by sunlight. Number four, we have energy, improved the efficiency and cost effectiveness in solar panels, create new finds of batteries, and create better lighting systems. So, hindi na tayo magkakaroon ng energy crisis. Number five, we have environment. Researchers are developing nanostructured filters that can remove vir virus cells and other impurities from water which may help create clean, affordable, and abundant drinking water. So, kung sa ngayon na marami pang mga water sources sa atin na hindi pa naiinom, so, itong nanotechnology, it help para makakreate ng clean and affordable and abundant drinking water. Next, we have electricity electronics mainly new screen based appliances phones and so on incorporate nanostructural polymer films known as organic light emitting diodes or oleds this made brighter lighter and better picture quality so katong hilig dara mag selfie selfie na gusto jud na guwapa kay sila dara nga side na nindot kay lang picture pang instram instagramable kayo so it nano technology is helpful for that we have also textiles Additives in fabrics help resist staining, wrinkling, and bacteria growth. So also, nanotechnology has a great impact to our te textiles, no? Para dilit na mag uh, ano og stain, mga wrinkling, and bacteria growth. Next, we have cosmetics. Improve coverage, absorption, and cleansing. So, kinsa tong mga hilig dara mga beauty products, mga cosmetics, pagwapa-gwapa. So, now magiging advanced na rin yung cosmetics natin. It will improve. Next, we let us move on to what is the importance of nanotechnology. Okay. Nanotechnology has greatly contributed to the to major advances in computing and electronics leading to faster, smaller, and more portable systems that can manage and store larger amounts of information. So, sabi nila, the smaller the conductor, mas daghan o mas torn na mga data and information. And ika nga, small but terrible. And we have also the advantages and disadvantages of nanotechnology. And these are the advantages. First, offers the potential for new and faster kinds of computers. The smaller the conductors, the faster our computer. So, mas magiging sophisticated ng ating mga computers with the use of this nanotechnology because sabi nila, the smaller the conductors, the faster our computer. So, uh, lalo na ngayon na ginagamit natin mga computers, laptop, na kahit anong gadgets in our online classes. So, dili na maglaglag. So, kung naay quiz, dara, anay oral, naay oral recitation, dili na magpatik-atik o live-live, kunuhay, kay para ingnon nga nilag, pero wala di ay, charing lang. Next, we have more efficient and power sources. So, mas efficient na ang ating mga power sources and life-saving medical treatments. Yun na nga, kasi dito, uh, nanotechnology ay nakakatulong upang talagang i-target yung mga cancer cells in the body without affecting the uh, yung mga hindi cancer cells sa ating katawan. So, kung may advantages, meron ding disadvantages. So, first dyan ay economic disruption. Why economic disruption? Kasi itong nanotechnology ay uh, still an ongoing process at ito ay 
uh, gagasto talaga ng pera kasi under under process pa and it will consume your time effort and of course money next is possible threats to security privacy and health and the environment next is high reactivity and toxicity I turn sa high reactivity and toxicity to yung kasi yung mga materials na ginagamit nito ay hindi rin nakakabuti sa ating environment and also to our health Next, the important personages who have contributed to the growth and study of the non-world. So, these are the persons now behind the growth of the non-world, but I will tackle only one. Richard Finman, American theoretical physicist. And Richard Finman also is the father of nanotechnology. The retroactive the rediscovery of Finman's plenty of room gave nanotechnology a package and history that provided an early date of December 1959 plus a connection to the charisma and genius of Richard Finman. So yung sinabi ko kanina sa history of nanotechnology, ang idea at concept talaga nito ay nanggaling kay Richard Finman but ang nanotechnology na word ay na term ay ginamit noong 1980s. So, and that concludes my discussion for today about the nano world, the importance of nano world, the history of nano world, and examples of nanomaterials, nanoparticles, and also about the nano science and uh, the personages behind the nano world or the nanotechnology. That's all. Thank you and keep safe and God bless everyone.